Morning. I swear a lot. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Frostpunk. Welcome back to what might be the end of Frostpunk. This may well be the finale. Uh, we need to raise 3,000 coal, we need 250 steel, and we need 5 steam cores. Now, fortunately, we already have 4 steam cores, and that's an excellent start. So once we've gotten that final steam core, we can put all of our production into steel. But we also need to set up a coal thumping situation so that we can get lots of coal. I'm hoping... Coal game, plus 1,663 per day. Wait, I think we're set anyway. I'll probably set up the coal thumper just in case, but we might actually be sorted anyhow. But uh, I'm also considering the possibility that the game might throw me for a loop. There might be some events that will happen, and that could be a problem. So I don't want to count my chickens just yet, but it is looking pretty good right now. Discontent's going up in a major way. I wish it wouldn't. I really wish they would hurry up and build that. We're wasting coal production right now, and apparently this is going to take 12, 11 hours. You people are so slow. All right, well, we're going to need wood, so we'll do that. And at least get that going. Got a bunch of stuff coming in. So it's tight. It's cool. Shipments are on the way to New London involving workers foo and food. The two of those are done. We just got to handle coal and building materials. There we go. That was a lot quicker than I thought it'd be. All right, coal. So our capacity for coal right now is 1,800. And we need to get that up to 3,000. Really, we need to do this before we start expanding our coal infrastructure. Although, maybe. Hmm. It's hard to say, because it might take a while to get to the... Now nah, we'll want to set up the coal uh, storage capacity first. Bunch of resources just came in. That's good. Resource Depot. A go. This might actually end up being quite a short video, because I don't think there's a lot I need to do. It of course depends on if Saving New London truly is the end. What's going on, guys? Some people are concerned about the low temperature in their homes. Within two days, though, it's going to get colder. I won't address this right now. I know discontent will go up. It's fine. We're in something of a crisis period, ladies and gentlemen. We need to band together to make this happen. And that means making lots of sacrifices. And by sacrifices, I mean you lot make sacrifices and I won't do anything. Your machines are scary and they do not belong in our settlement, but since they are here, we're grateful that we can use them. Your people were a bit gruff initially since we had so many questions and trouble with understanding the answers, but after a while, we got it. Thanks to your help, there's nothing more to improve for now. The knowledge that we can malmanage the machinery even if you decide to leave Hot Springs one day is comforting. Carry on. Cool, so they're done. Wonderful. Took them a long time to determine that they were done. We're going to need one more resource depot. And then we'll have the capacity we need to get the coal. We've got an overnight shift going, so we're making coal overnight, which is fantastic. That's done. Coal. To so quickly check that, just to make sure. And yep, storage is at 2,700. So by the time that's done, it'll be at like 3,600. We'll have enough storage capacity. Then we're going to want to look into perhaps getting that whole coal thumper situation going. I don't think it's entirely necessary to set up the coal thumper, but... At the same time, there's nothing here. Sunlight reflects on the surface of the ice and it's very nice. Yeah, whatever. Victim's colony, go. I would rather get this sorted as soon as possible. Just get it done, you know? Not worry about whether or not it's going to be sent too late or anything like that. I'll we'll change this to steel. I want to get these shipments sorted. Scouts have returned with a bunch of stuff. That's lovely. I'd like you to go back out again, though, because there's more stuff to see. Go check. Oh, God, drying springs is two days away. Probably never going to see the results from that, but whatever. It's fine. Once we've sorted out New London, we'll. I think we'll continue trying to help out the coal mine people, but, you know, it won't be a huge priority. But we'll be okay regardless. We need to get this done. Honestly, coal is going up so fast that I'm not concerned at all. Food is a little low. 
We want to jump on that just in case. There we go. Coal storage is sorted. Fuck it, we've got a bunch of people just hanging around doing nothing, I say. I say we do the thing. Because there's also some steel ruins around here, so if we can get a gathering post around here, we could also scoop those up, which would be lovely. Yes, yes, we'll be done with time to spare. Also, it'll be good to take this more proactive approach because if then New London is like, oh, wait, there's something else we need. Oh, there's something very, oh, wait, but you're not done yet. And we'll be like, okay, well, we did this quickly enough and we're ready for it. Sending us the food rations, you've accomplished more than just saving us from starvation. You've rekindled hope among our people. They're still hungry, but we know what it took to deliver this much and we appreciate this a lot. Glad to hear it, maybe. Maybe a thank you would be nice. I'm not sure if they've actually said thank you yet. Like, once, in any sense. I don't think they've said the words thank you at all. <laughs> Wooden supports, get it going. Steel might actually be the thing that takes the longest to get enough of. Because it is a primary building material, of course. People in there. More working. Oh yeah, it's very cold in there. Turn the heating up. There we go. We can afford that coal expenditure. Yes, we can. Yeah, we're fine. And the moment we get 3,000 coal sent over to New London, I'm going to turn up the heating again. Like, we're going to be warm again. That's, that is what we're going to do. Straight up. So the sooner we get it, the better things will be. Put some engineers in there. The children don't need to work. We'll use them as backup for the cookhouse. More survivors. When we approach the palisade, we notice that the gate is ajar. We enter cautiously and see ourselves surrounded by silhouettes of people wandering aimlessly among the settlement's buildings. They react to our presence only when we try to talk to them. It seems that these people have lost everyone and everything in the great storm, even the will to live. We can try to move them to our outpost, but even if they agree, we will have to escort them. Yeah, escort them, yeah. Some survivors, but unfortunately not all, saw sense when we proposed to move them to our outpost. Maybe they can recover over time. They packed their meager belongings and set off with us. So how many people was that? 27. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's more. We've saved people. There are 157 people in this outpost. This outpost is fucking huge. So how's the coal situation now? Ah, oh, it's looking even better. You'll love to see it. Four days, basically, until we f haven't saved New London, I guess. We're fine. No problems at all. Temperature is going to go down soon, so I really want to get that coal sorted out before then. Whether or not we can is anyone's guess. The workers you sent us are a great help. Nearly all of our facilities are understaffed. Many of our workers are sick and even more are weakened by hunger. Your people give us hope that we still have a chance. Say thank you, you bastard. Just one thank you is really all we're looking for. Just say it. Thank you. It'd be very easy. It'd be so easy, you know? The steel ruins have been depleted. That's fine. It's not really the main focus for these two. But it is a little added extra. We've almost got enough steel. We're very nearly there. I think we'll need to at least turn these on. Right, yeah, turn these on because it's a bit too, it's going to be a bit too cold, I think, without them. And that'll cheer people up as well. I don't think we're going to get enough coal by tomorrow morning, so let's just look after people a little bit, shall we? That's on, very good. Oh, we've got enough steel. Cool. Cool. Send it off. Send it off. Oh, we've got enough steel. Yeah, we've got enough steel and steam cores. Send it off. And then switch that back to doing both. Because, you know, the coal mine, the children in the coal mines also want a steam core. So if we can get that set up, that'd be nice. That'd be a nice thing to do. <sighs> 
Almost had enough coal. So close. Tomorrow for sure. We've got this in the bag. It's fucking easy. Fuck it, overnight shift boys, go for it. Work hard, get it done. Big prizes. Yeah, we love big prizes. We love to work. Long live the shift, may it never end. Your research advanced burners. Now that we've sent off the steel, we can afford the resources. And it'll help with our coal efficiency, which won't matter once we've sent the coal, but... Hey-ho. It helps. Maybe we'll need to send more coal for some reason. Temperature will go up on the 36th, it'll go back down on the 37th. But by the time the 36th rolls around, we'll have sent off the coal. And I can more... Uh, less of even less efficiently manage our coal so that we can have the heating going everywhere as good as it should be and everyone will be fine. Discontent will drop like a rock. Everything will be good. Today is a good day. You know today is going to be a good day, Philomena. You know it. It will be. Oh, uh, look at those numbers go up. I want to wait until we get just above 3,000, obviously. Immediately after receiving the materials shipment from you, we start building the infirmaries and hothouses. Soon we'll be able to care for our patients without triaging and feed all the hungry. The specters of illness and starvation no longer hang over us. Say thank you, you asshole. Just say thank you. I'm a very particular man. I like to be thanked. Can we go for that trade? Because we could do some more food sooner than it's actually arriving. Shift's on. Shift's on. Get on with it. Get on with it. I'm going to wait till he gets to 3,100 and then send it off so that we're not, you know, <laughs> struggling, as it were. There we go. It's comfortably in 3,100 now. New London, got a present for you. More coal than you know what to do with. Except not really. If they're a town as big or a city as big as I think they are, they probably need all that coal. They've returned with people. Ah, oh, fuck. We need, they need houses. When is that wood coming in? A while from now. This actually... There's something we can do here. We don't need that much coal storage anymore. Salvage these and we'll turn them into houses. Oh, you guys are waiting. Oh, I do apologize. I mean, you're just hanging out. It's all good. Go to the good station. Go, 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 go to the good station, please. Thank you. Quickly salvage those so that we can use them. That'd be great. Thank you. There we go. We can start building a house. Start building a hoose. And then when we get a chance, we'll build another resource depot to replace the food one and get that set up so we have it. And then everything will be fine. London nearly has everything it needs. The kids want a coal mine rebuild. Yeah, go for it. We now don't have enough wood for the resource depot, but that's fine. We're about to get enough wood. The, si the end. The city is saved. We did it. New London is no longer in danger of collapse. It was a trying time for all, full of strife and discord. But that's behind us now. Despite all the misunderstandings and unnecessary grudges, we saw past our differences and lent a hending helping hand to those in need. The last city on Earth remains the best hope of mankind. But how long will its people remember the lesson that it was discord and not the great storm that turned out to be the ultimate threat? Uninstall discord <laughs> before it's too late. That is literally the end. Wow. Oh, God. We're only 20 minutes in. We have prevailed. Damn, I can't believe it. It worked out. I'm so happy we saved them. We were all in this together in the end. Great job, people. And for a good cause. Wow. It's actually over. Shit. <laughs> I really thought that was going to take a little longer. We were just an outpost. And the first time we fucked it up. Ruled by New London. They changed the rules. Exploited us. I would never do such a thing. So we rose and became pre-evil. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. Oh, it doesn't bode well, does it? 
to stand against New London. We sought friends. We sent them support. And their settlements thrived. And then the Luddites were like, please destroy everything you built in our settlement because we don't like it. Then our former masters turned up to beg for rescue, to suckle upon our teat. And we saved the city with the help of our allies. We averted a disaster thanks to cooperation. And we learned the lesson that the ultimate threat was not the storm, but Discord. Uninstall Discord. New London Territory. Population 898, 1887. 1916. Well, I'll be. Uh, that is the only happy ending, like, unquestionably, no moral questions, you know, presented in the credits, happy ending that this game has had. There was no, like, we abused order or we made sacrifices. It was like, no, we all worked together and made it happen. And we saved a city full of people and everyone's doing great. And it's actually a happy ending to Frostpunk of all things, which is surprising. But then there's Frostpunk 2, of course, which has been made known to me that it's not a continuation. It's just these events told from the American perspective and will focus more on oil than coal, which will be interesting. Very much looking forward to that. But uh, you know what? On the Edge is actually pretty fun. I quite like it and the whole managing trade deals kind of situation. And instead of being like the big cheese in the area, as it were, you're just playing a part, as it were. You're part of a cog of a, a collection of settlements that are all supporting each other. Of course, you've got to be the one to set that all up. You've got to be the guy who brings everyone together and it's like, all right, we need supply chains. We need to supply each other and then we can all thrive. And then it builds on from there and it's a really cool gameplay mechanic. I really enjoy it. Or really enjoyed it. It's over now. Bit, it's a weird complaint to make, but I think it's a bit too short, actually. I'd have loved more of On The Edge, but um, you know, that's just me. Damn, Frostpunk's done. We've actually beaten all of the scenarios in Frostpunk 1. I have actually beaten them all. Now, ignoring the horrific disaster that was my Fall of Winterhome campaign, I did beat all of them, and most of them I think I actually got, like, if not the best endings, then close to the best endings on them. Ignoring the deep dipping too far into laws and going too far into, like, order and what have you. Because, of course, as some people have said, in many cases, the true challenge of Frostpunk is not actually to beat the scenarios, but it's to beat the scenarios in a way you're morally comfortable with, you know? Like, it's pretty easy to beat a new home if you go hard into order. It's actually really, it's, it's not difficult at all. But if you don't go hard into order and still manage to save New London and wait out the Great Storm, the wet Great Frost, that's an accomplishment. That's that's an actual challenge. That's a proper challenge. But I actually kind of appreciate the game on this perspective because it means you can just play the game if you want. And it is challenging. It's not easy, but you can just play the game without, um, without it being too difficult. The game's not too hard in the grand scheme of things. But if you're looking for a greater challenge, the game is willing to provide either by having you play to your own morals or, um, you know, customizing the scenario. Like, you can turn all this stuff up to extreme, or there's survivor mode. Survive against all odds, there's no active pause. The game will be very difficult, and your progress will be saved on exit only. I assume this turns all of the sliders up to max and then gets rid of your ability to uh, save an active pause, which is pretty cool. And I might do that someday. That does sound kind of fun. Like, I'd like to try that with... Maybe go back and do a new home on Survivor. That might be fun. I don't know. But I have no immediate plans to do that ladies and gentlemen this has been a 25 part series it's been quite a long one but not too long it's been a comfortable series i think i've been very comfortable making this series a lot of series have involved me sitting here and sweating over some detail i've had to deal with where i'm like fuck i just can't beat this bit and i'm gonna have to keep 
bashing my head against it until I can do it. Or there'll be parts of the game where I'm like, I'm not really enjoying this, but I just kind of need to get through it. Like, I like the game, I like the game as a whole, but, you know, I have to just kind of grit my teeth and get through this part. Frostpunk? Frostpunk was a joy from start to finish. I didn't like the Fall of Winter Home scenario very much, but that's not... That's not a fault of the Fall of Winter Home, you know? The Fall of Winter Home is not a bad scenario, I just personally didn't enjoy it as much as the others. They're all fantastic, and my experience with Frostpunk has actually been fantastic. It is a hell of a game. It's so fun, like... There's the moral aspects, of course. Like, the biggest advertisement of this game is the moral aspects, the brutal um, methods you have to undertake in order to survive like it's a difficult world to survive in and you have to pretty much throw the book of morals out the window in order to get through or not if you want to challenge but as well as that because sometimes i find the games that propose moral questions or really lean in on uh matters of philosophy and what have you and rights and what is good and what is bad or whatever they tend to suffer in the gameplay um department as it were like the gameplay tends to suffer a little because the focus is more on the the, the psychological aspects, but the management in Frostpunk, like the city management, is great. The game really forces you to look at the situation and be like, right, what can I do about this? And it's like, there's no one solution. There's no one crystal golden solution to every problem. There are multiple solutions with multiple ups and bads, goods and bads, right? And you know, like there are better and worse ways to do some things than others, but then they carry their own benefits in other fields. Like, if you've got a surplus of wood, why would you not build a charcoal kiln? Like, that's a really basic one, but, you know. And when it comes to these objectives and stuff, it does kind of force you to be like, all right, well, maybe I just need to fucking tank everything to just achieve this one objective and then we'll be okay. But can you make it long enough? Can you maintain that for long enough? Can you... Have you built your city well enough and your society well enough to now tank everything in the pursuit of one goal and last long enough to do so? At the end there, it was very easy to get enough coal, but that's because we were in such a comfortable position. Because we had solid foundations. Because I had spent the entire fucking campaign setting us up. Because anyone who plays on the edge knows that- well, yeah, because if you've played every fucking scenario in Frostpunk by this point, you know there's going to be some big bullshit like, get this absurd amount of resources challenge by the end of it. There always fucking is. So... You're, you've got that in mind, you're not necessarily hoarding things because you don't necessarily know what you're going to need, but you're setting yourself up to have good foundations, and the key to good foundations and on the edge is to set up with at least two of those other settlements. Honestly, the, uh, the convicts and hot springs are crucial. The coal mine, not so much, really. Like, the, the children's mine, because you have access to a coal mine in your settlement, and braziers don't take much coal, and hot heaters don't take much coal, so... You're not doing too bad on that front, but I, if I had managed to max out um, relations and settlement development with the children's mine, it would have been even fucking easier at the end there, because all I would have needed to have provided was steel and steam cores, and that was an absolute breeze. I got lucky in that I'd actually been hoarding steam cores a little bit before we got there. Not intentionally, I just set the uh, warehouse to, you know, harvest steel and steam cores. It was not intentional, but it worked out very well. The game's great. The game's really fucking good. I feel like I've gotten a, satis a fully satisfactory experience from it, you know? I don't feel like it's... It, like, despite the fact I could have probably played on the edge for a little while longer, I honestly don't think it was too short. I don't think it was too long. I think the scenarios stuck around for exactly as long as they should have. Like, they didn't outstay their welcome. I think the last autumn drags a little bit at the end there. Like, you know... I get that time is very much a part of the challenge in Frostpunk where you are surviving in many cases and you need to hold on, but that one did drag a bit at the end, but other than that, the last autumn was fucking incredible, it was basically flawless, right? But no, this game didn't outstay its welcome, no scenario was too long nor too short, only the fall of Winterhome I think was a bit too unforgiving, but I don't think it's fair to complain about something being unforgiving in fucking Frostpunk. The game is unforgiving. That's like the theme of the game. So, while I, whenever I make a complaint about the Fall of Winter Home, rest assured that it's a personal taste thing and not like an actual attempt at like an objective assessment of the scenario itself. 
I know a lot of people aren't actually hugely keen on the Fall of Winterheim, but I do think it's a good campaign. I think it's a really good scenario, it just doesn't suit me personally. Like, I don't know. It was a bit too much of, now this happened, you're fucked, and now the Arcs have fun. Well, not the Arcs, sorry, the fucking Dreadnought. Have fun, dickhead. And I was like, mm, <laughs> I just want to leave. And I did. If you think I'm stalling a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, it's because I felt pretty bad at the fact that we beat this fucking scenario at 23 minutes into the episode. And should I feel bad about that? Because a lot of people out there put out content that's between like 10 to 25 minutes long, and I consistently put out hour-long content. Should I feel bad about having a video that's slightly shorter? I don't know. It just doesn't feel right, though. I like to have my content be like 45 minutes to an hour long. It just feels natural to me. It feels comfortable. I have enough time to really sit here and talk about stuff and make jokes and play the game without worrying that I'm running out of time. And I don't have to rush it all either. Like, there's plenty of time for me to look at something and go, oh, that's funny. I'll talk about that or I'll crack this joke. Whatever. There's a lot of editing space. You know, it... it Having a longer form video just gives me a lot more cushion to play around with the actual video itself and then in the editing later. But, um, yeah, no, I, I do enjoy doing long form content. There's something, like, because I've watched a few long form content creators out there during my time. It's where I potentially got the idea to do it myself. Like, initially, in some of my earliest videos in my quote unquote career, I did do, like, 30 minute videos and stuff like that. Like, I kept the time short. This would have been before Form and Play stuff. I actually had a channel before this one. Oh, I co-hosted it. It was a fucking clusterfuck, but it got me some initial experience, so that was pretty cool. But what I learned throughout all this time, from my experience and through watching other videos, is that people don't quite realize that there's a bit more to making long-form content than just having a long recording session. Because... You can make a long-form video, that's great, it's not actually difficult to do. I could sit here and record Total Warhammer 3 for two hours and BAM, there's a fucking long-form video for you. But the thing is, if you just record two hours of footage and then just immediately render it and put it up, that's just not going to be a very good video. Or at least I don't think it is, personally. I, a lot of what I do with my videos comes down to personal taste. But making, in my opinion, this is all in my opinion, do a big asterisk saying in my opinion for everything I'm saying about this. In my opinion, in order to make a good long form video, and this is why I don't like streaming, there's a lot of cutting and editing and snipping that needs to be done. A long form video should be long, yes, but it needs to, I think a long form video needs to feel shorter than it actually is, if you know what I mean. There needs to be a pace. It needs to keep going. You don't want to just sit here while I'm sat here in silence looking at my buildings in Frostpunk, occasionally clicking on one to check the temperature level. That's not interesting. That's not fun. I don't presume you guys have like a short attention span or something, though some people do and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's me trying to respect your time more than anything where I'm like, I'm not going to have you sit here and stare at nothing, right? I want to show you what's going on expediently. I want to get like this. Definitely stuff to be said for a video having ups and downs in like pace, you know? To easing it off before then speeding it up a bit and all that but if there is going to be a slow point it needs to serve a purpose i'm not for the sake of me being lazy and having less work to do i'm not just gonna sit here and let you guys stare at nothing happening i've you know you're giving me your time i've got to respect that and i tried to and i hope that you feel like i have been I don't know, the thought might not have even crossed your mind, but these are all the things I think about on a daily basis. But ladies and gentlemen, I have bullshitted long enough and I am now not respecting your time by extending this video longer than it needs to be. I'm sorry, I just wanted to give you a bit more bang for your buck today. I don't know if this is it. this was interesting to you. I hope it was. We're done with Frostpunk, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. We're done. We survived the Great Frost. What do you got? No balls. Special thanks to Zlol, Anthony Vienko, Ethrobin, Linky, Zeon Cedar, Bimblewort, Tom King, Majoko Mime, and Adash Sanjeev, Alkir, Honeydew Corporation, Sweet Baby Red, MB Alias, Lord Skellington, Jesse Kissy, Plutonium Pie, Dreamer Ghost, Lepa Lullaby, K Bub, Magic Cow, The Frostbite, Monsoon, Swirled, Warmaster Oku, SCP 106A, Namad, and Kenny C800 for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you all so much for watching. Frostpunk is over. We're done. We're done with it, and Frostpunk 2 won't be out until sometime into 2024, so we've got a break from the cold for a while. Appropriate as we move into winter. 
I obviously have a couple ideas lined up for another series to follow this one, because I like to have two series going on at any given time. But I may, I haven't decided yet, I may take a quick sec to just do some one-offs and play around some videos I want to do. We're still doing Fear and Hunger 2 after all, so we're still going ahead with that. Let me know what you want to see, right? Like, if there are series you have in mind, if you have ideas, then let me know. I can't promise I'll do them, but it's always good to get more ideas. I'm 99% certain I'm not going to do Limbus, so, you know, you can ask, but I, I wouldn't get your hopes up. Uh, but, yeah. Let me know. Let me see. Let me know what games you want to see. And whatever happens next time, I hope I see you there. Doodles. Goodbye.